you in this room, you're here because you care about this area. You want to see this area get better. Uh, just shout out if you can, and I urge you to be interactive. Interrupt me at any time. Otherwise, I'll feel like this is a terrible presentation. So it's really good to get your feedback. What are some things you want to see the city of Columbia or Murray County have that we don't have right now? Not retail-wise, but just in general. Is it better schools? Is it nicer parks? A better downtown? A, a more attractive highway? What's something you want? Yes, all, those. all of the above? Okay. Stuff to do at night. Stuff to do at night. Now, when, I, when we do talk about retail specifically, retail being shops and stores, what are some shops and some stores that you want? Publix. What else? Panera. Panera. Starbucks. I got a Starbucks. Old an Old Navy. An outlet store. Or well, Apple. yeah, yeah. Okay, so we got Publix, Old Navy, Starbucks, Panera. I'm sure you've got others on the top of your head. What was that? <laughs> a Puckets. Well, I got good news for you. <laughs> Thanks to my own hard work. If you walk away with anything today. Walk away with one thing. All the things that you want in the community, as far as the nicer highways, uh, the more attractive city, the better schools, it's the same exact thing that those retailers that you mentioned want too. It's the same exact thing. That's what they look for when they're looking for a town. And so if you walk away with one, matter of fact, I'm going to walk away, right? <laughs> I'll see you all later. Have a nice day, right? Huh? No, but it. it Everything that you want in the town, let me get back to the microphone. Everything that you want in this town is the exact thing that retailers are looking for when they decide where to locate. So in other words, what you want, what retailers want, it's the same thing. They're in it for business. You're in it for the community. And so what we have here, by virtue of this retail studies, we've discovered essentially the solutions that will help you as a community and also help business. What else can you ask for? It's really exciting for us, I think for me, for Branham, uh, for others who have worked on this project, because we have discovered essentially the things that you share in common with, with these businesses that if we got as a whole, we'd all benefit from. So that's the, again, I'll see you later, that's it. <laughs> all right, the retail coach. As you see on the slide here, this is the consultant who we hired to do the study for us. Uh, his name is Kelly Kofer. He and his firm, which has many other people in it, wonderful bunch of people out of Mississippi and Texas. Uh, he's really actually, Kelly has grown to care about this community the way that you do. I mean, he's class act. And uh, everything that I'm showing here are things that he has already shown personally to uh, the city council, to the Murray Alliance uh, Board of Directors and some other people. And of course, now we're carrying this message to you, who I'd argue are the most important members uh, of the community to see this. So here's a little bit of the agenda. We're going to take probably an hour on each bullet. <laughs> so what do retailers look for? Again, you're going to see, not in every one of these, but in most of these, they're looking for the same exact stuff that you're looking for when you chose to either live here or decide that you want to make this place better. So uh, now they're looking for things like, for example, um, you know, adequate retail trade area, disposable income, median age, demographic stuff that, that maybe you don't look at, but educational attainment. These are things that are very important. What's the high school graduation rate? You wanted to get better. They want it to be well. Otherwise, they're not going to feel secure. And the same goes then for how many people have bachelor's degrees, how many people have uh, community like technical degrees. It says a lot about a person's purchasing power as a customer if they have those things. Now, this is just straight statistics, some of this that I'm talking about. But it, again, it goes back to having good educational opportunities. It goes back to having uh, a place where people with those educational uh, achievements want to live. It all goes into this and we'll just tie it in more later. Uh, uh, quality of place down there, that's really key. Again, some of this is more retail stuff that just is retail specific, but quality of place. What is my first impression of the community? A lot of you have lived here a long time now, I think. I know I've lived here three years now. 
But when I first came to town, my first impression is, man, they got an amazing downtown. Now, I don't know about the rest because I didn't really think much about it. But we've got an amazing quality of place in at least a portion, if not most of our community, maybe in all of our community. That's a more judgmental thing, right? More subjective. But that's what they're looking for, quality of place, <laughs> pride of ownership. Now, every one of us here in this room, I think, have a great deal of pride, a great deal of ownership in the community. But we've all seen the litter, right? We've all seen the broken signs that need to be fixed. Pride of ownership is key. Functional infrastructure, well, that falls more into my line. Uh, but making sure the roads are working correctly, which by and large they are. We don't really have many traffic problems compared to, say, other towns our size. We're actually doing okay there. And then evidence of crime, security bars, graffiti. I think we can all imagine a few of those images in our head where they exist right now. Uh, code enforcement. Are we enforcing our existing codes? Well, we're trying. Uh, is there investment instead of disinvestment? This is, goes to one of my favorite things. Um, you hear people say sometimes that nothing's happening in Columbia or nothing's changing. The fact is there's always change. It's just a matter of is it going up as an in investment, positive, or is it going down as in disinvestment? There's no such thing as no change. You're either making good change, you're making bad change. Now you measure it on the whole, so there's good things happening at the school district and then maybe there's not good things happening somewhere else, but there's either up or down. There's no such thing as no change. So, is there investment or disinvestment? Uh, is there development or redevelopment? Is it happening? Um, a lot of these right now, we can answer yes to. Uh, there are a high number of vacancies, uh, but there is redevelopment happening. Uh, there's also investment. <coughs> Uh, so that's all good. Um, let's skip this slide. Again, this is some of the stuff that we've shown to others who really, we just want to focus probably on this slide as one of the bigger things. Here's the realization that Kelly came up with that you yourselves have probably come up with at some point as well. The realization that Columbia is becoming a discount market. We mentioned Publix. We mentioned uh, Panera. We mentioned Starbucks. These are things that we want, right? These are stores, restaurants, that if they were here, we'd be spending more of our money here. We wouldn't be going to Spring Hill every Friday night, right? Some of us, most of us, me. <laughs> Columbia is becoming a discount market, and that's why those retailers are not here. They're not here right now because they're seeing a lot of this instead. You see, what's beautiful about retail is it has no... Retail is straight business. You can, you can try to convince a store like, look, we really care, we really love Publix, we're really trying hard, but if they don't see the numbers, they're not coming. They are not coming. As much as we all love, say, Panera, they're not going to come if the numbers don't support it. Right now, for better or for worse, the numbers, meaning the demographics, meaning the income levels, educational achievements, things like this, this is what's being supported. You know, there's all different kinds of retailers. These are the ones that are currently looking at our demographics and saying, okay, this is a good fit. Let's go there. So this is the reason why we have a lot of cash advance, a lot of liquor stores, uh, a lot of the uh, title loans, because quite frankly, that's what our demographics, the numbers show. Now, you and I don't see that. You and I, we probably don't. Well, does anyone here visit any of these? I don't think so. Well, I yeah. <laughs> okay. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, and 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 you know, you have to walk a fine line here because look, there are people I'm sure. Uh, who need this sort of thing. And obviously because they've got plenty of customers or there wouldn't be this many stores there right now. So what retail does, when you look at your existing retail, you get a hard look at what your community is. Because these retailers actually know it better than I do in some cases. So you're not getting a Panera and we're not getting a, 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 an Old Navy right now because the numbers don't support it. But quite frankly, if let me find a way to put this right. Now, this is just talking straight statistics, okay? 
straight numbers. If there were a number, another um, 20,000 people who fit your all's demographic, we'd have all those things. All those things you're talking about. Now what's so interesting about that to me, I get excited about it, is because that 20,000 that would support the Panera and the, and the Old Navy, they're just nine miles up the road. They're just nine miles up the road in Spring Hill. They were here at one point, and like Wes was talking about, somehow there was a mass exodus. Moses part of the Red Sea, and they all followed him up <laughs> to where the, uh, the Red Raiders, are they the Red Raiders? The, okay, okay, well, I was, well, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, why did they leave? Well, look. This is James Campbell, and the realization that Kelly came up with, this is what I love. You pay an expert a whole lot of money, and he tells you the one thing that you've known deep within, but, you, but you've never quite enunciated. We need to address our issues. What says it better, as far as what our issues are, than a sign, a tobacco sign, that's framed with two cigarettes? Do you see that? <laughs> Do you see the cigarettes? I mean, <laughs> I noticed that the first day I got here, but I didn't notice it again until I saw this picture. Um, this is what our market is right now. This is what our reality is. This is what Columbia is. And as much as you and I see the good here and the potential here, these retailers that we want, they're not interested in that. They're interested in what's here today. Kelly has shown us what is here today, and, uh, and I hope we're all realizing it and starting to realize what kind of challenge we face as far as bringing in the things that we're talking about. Um, I mentioned before that there's no such thing as no change. Case in point, what are the consequences of doing nothing? Uh, this slide talks about basically what's been happening for the past, I'd say, 15 years. Wes mentioned a, a, a number or, or the phenomenon that's happening where people of, of your all's, say, age group, demographic, what have you, have been leaving and going to Colum or Spring Hill. Uh, it happened about starting about 15 years ago, and, uh, and I spotted it first, and, and we'll show it in another slide here in a second. And, uh, and that's the consequence of doing nothing. As we do nothing, we get retail and restaurant attrition, meaning those things start to leave, which they have been doing. We have been seeing more empty storefronts, that sort of thing. Uh, we start to see more discount, heavy discount users. Again, the only thing that's really grown here is Dollar General. Now, Dollar General's great, but Dollar General can't be the only thing that's to sustain, you know, all the infrastructure tax burden that we've got uh, or satisfy your needs as a customer or a consumer. Uh, eroding property values. I can tell you right now, the, uh, now this is based on just, just again, straight numbers, and so this number can be debated, but the average home value in, in, in Columbia is right now about 114000 Jimmy knows this number better than I do, so he can correct me, but we're way below some of our competing cities, and that's why, because again, the consequences of doing nothing, we've done nothing to address the issue, so all those things are happening. We say there's been no change here. The fact is the change is happening, but it's going in a downward trend instead of an upward trend, and we're just not noticing it as much. So who's been the beneficiary, Spring Hill and Franklin? Without a question, but more Spring Hill than anything. It's unbelievable. I've been, I, saw, I told somebody this earlier, uh, I've been, I've worked in, six cities in three different states and before that did plenty of research as a grad student and all that kind of stuff I've never seen it as far as the degree of change as as I've seen it here between Columbia and Spring Hill um, but but this is what's happening right now all these things you know uh, we're having a hard time recruiting industry we're having a hard time uh, generated any residential development. There wasn't a single new subdivision in this city in all of last year, which for me is amazing. I've never worked in a city like that. Usually you see at least 10 to 15, not a single red cent worth of new subdivision development in this city. 
stark. It's incredibly stark. So anyways, um, let's skip that. Here's the great news. Here's the bright spots for us to focus on. I can talk all day about, oh, how bad, you know, everything. It's beside the point. The good news is we have an incredibly powerful dynamic here in Colombia. The dynamic is we are the draw for a pretty large region. We have a little something known as a hospital. Very helpful. <laughs> Joke. But we also have, uh, you know, Columbia State. Again, powerful regional draw. A, 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 a school with eight campuses? Andy, right? We were talking earlier. I mean, you know, it's a huge school. It's a big school. Big regional draw. Lawrenceburg, Pulaski, Lewisburg, Shelbyville, even Spring Hill to agree, people in those areas come to Columbia on average of about mm, maybe two or three times a week if they don't work here. Then maybe two or three times a week or they come through. And then we also have sub areas. We're going to skip that one. Okay, so here's the point. Our primary retail trade area is enormous. It's everything in that blue area. Now, primary retail trade area means, again, those people who come here two or three times a week. So those are customers. That's a customer base that Panera looks for, Old Navy looks for, Cash Advance Title Loans looks for. They all look for it. We have an enormous retail trade area. In fact, our retail trade area, from a competitive standpoint, is much larger than Spring Hills. Much larger. Spring Hill, this is interesting to me, Spring Hill is, is very limited. They're bookended. You have Franklin up here. You have Columbia down here. They can't expand much in their trade area beyond, you know, these two cities. We can expand infinitely down up until around, well, I'll show you in a second, up until around we get to a point where it's almost <coughs> easier to go to Huntsville. But we've got a huge area where we can draw people. Spring Hill does not. So, anyways, that... Retail trade area is 107,000 people. Now, never mind all the other stuff about incomes and whatnot. The fact is, if you can pull and say confidently to a retailer, there's 107,000 people who come through this area two or three times a week, guess what? That's very strong. That's the power of what this city has, and that's what the city has harnessed as its energy to pull what, what we have today in the past, say, 60 years. For the past 60 years, this trade area, that 107,000 people, including your uh, grandparents and parents, were really the customers that built the market in this area. So we've had this for a long time. It's a great advantage that we're just not taking care of. Um, and of course, our secondary retail trade area, these are the people who come once a week typically to maybe once a month. It could be more, but we're going to go past that. We're going to go past that one too. Um, we'll do this a little bit. Uh, this is the psychographic profile. This tells you what kind of folks are in that retail trade area. You folks are in it, certainly, but what are some other folks? What are the other, say, typical consumers that are in that 100,000 circle that we talked about? Well, um, it includes uh, big sky families, which are basically families that are uh, typically blue collar, Typically by all the sports equipment, that kind of thing. I mean, can you think of some of those families right now? Families that, uh, you know, uh, the dad is, uh, works in the trades maybe or is in manufacturing. The mom is a, is a nurse maybe or a nurse assistant. And they got kids and they go to every single baseball game. They go to every tournament. They buy, you know, fast food on the road to get to the next soccer match. You know what I mean? I mean, their spending habits very much fit a pattern. I mean, they, they buy craft barbecue sauce. You know, it, it fits a certain profile. I kid you not, it goes that uh, these, these retailers look for this kind of stuff. I mean, case in point, our Belk here in Columbia does not have any of the clothes that I typically buy. But they do have a wide assortment of, of, of jeans, of Wrangler uh, style and and some other brands like of shirts uh, some some they, they have I think they have steel toe boots there which I'd never seen in a belt before so this is what the psychographics are important for because it tells Belk hey look in this market we need this merchandise instead of say the market in Franklin 
needs another kind of merchandise. So it's really important and it's really fascinating if you want to get in the numbers because you find out again how many people buy Kraft barbecue sauce instead of stubs. Anyways, I'm getting down to the details. Mayberryville, these are folks who love the small town. And you know what, I think we fit in that to a certain degree. Um, again, th these are folks who have a lot of discretionary cash and they spend it on, say, the outdoorsy type stuff again, maybe on RVs, maybe on uh, motorcycles. They're not buying fine art, in other words. They see the fine art to be a Kawasaki, you know, um, <laughs> mountain bike. Uh, you, you, you get the idea. And the shotguns and pickups. Um, the, the name... The name drives me nuts, but the name also hits home to uh, a, a, a solid third of our population in this region. A solid third, okay? About a third of our population in this region are certainly working class, young. They live in small homes or mobile homes, and, uh, and they hunt in rifles and pickups. Now, that's pretty much Columbia in those three segments. Now. You folks might not fit those three segments, but of course the retailers are seeing a bigger picture. All right, so um, the retail gap analysis, and let me see what time it is. All right, it's 1220, I'm gonna wrap up. So we're gonna skip a few slides here, but I wanna show this slide especially, because this slide's really interesting. Um, everyone can read that, right? Yeah? Okay. Retail gap analysis basically tells you where the gaps are in your retail market, meaning the areas in your city where you're not getting enough stores into the community to meet the demand. So case in point, this is organized by, by the gross volume of revenue that's being lost. So there's two, there's two points here. Number one, there's about $500 million worth of retail trade that's going elsewhere. That's not taking place here. $500 million worth of buying and selling that could happen in Columbia that's not happening because the stores aren't here. They're elsewhere. So that's one point. We could capture, in other words, $500 million if we were on the ball. Uh, but, the, but the bigger point to me is you have big gaps, like for example, uh, shoe stores. Shoe stores right here is uh, about 81% of that market has, is not captured right now in Columbia. 81%, the bulk of that market. Now, that being said, guess what's opening up in Columbia in about another two months? That's exactly right. So what's so powerful about this information, and yeah, you know, shoe carnival, eh, they, they don't have the Cole Hans that I like, you know. No, but, but, the, but the point is, is that this is real data. This is real data that really shows, for example, on that top one, we need a grocery store. We need a grocery store. We could use a Publix, for example, or something like that. So um, really interesting stuff. It shows you where we can start capturing more of what we're not capturing. Uh, here are some of the retailers that we could start recruiting today. We all know about the, about the close, the, the, the flirtation that we had. We just passed each other like ships in the night. It just almost happened, but it didn't. Yeah, Bojangles is on there. Uh, uh, we've, got, uh, uh, we've got Chili's, McAllister's. Now, you don't see a Panera and you don't see an Old Navy, but that could come. You know, we've got to build towards that. And, and that word, build, brings me to the last stuff. Oh, oh, and we need to do facelifts on some buildings. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I know I'm skipping a bunch, but uh, I'm going to, well, no, let me show this for a minute, too. Again, the consequences of doing nothing. We talk about all the time how nothing changes in Columbia. I say we, people that talk with me anyways. Nothing's happening. Well, things are happening, just not in the way you want. For example, Spring Hill, of course, has been growing by leaps and bounds. We, meanwhile, have only grown by 0.66, <coughs> or we're only expected to grow by 0.66% in the next year. Folks, that's zero. You know, from a demographic, from a statistical standpoint, that's zero. Meanwhile, Spring Hill, of course, is growing by uh, uh, a lot. We're not growing. This is the consequence of doing nothing. And we've not done anything to address this issue 
for, for quite some time. Maybe because we didn't know what the issue was. That's the power, I hope, of today is that we know what the issue is and we know we've got great ideas on what needs to happen. So here comes to our final two points. Uh, we got to get started. Brandom and the Murray Alliance, they've got three things that they're doing to, to start recruiting the retailers, like on the slide that I showed a minute ago, the Starbucks, the, uh, uh, the, the, the Bojangles, etc. They can start recruiting those people let them know about our trade area. Let them know about the number of people who come through this town that could be consumers in Columbia. Uh, so there's an active effort there to recruit those people, to inform them, also to retain the ones that we've got today. So that's going to be going on on, the, on say, the, um, on the service side, serving the retailers, serving that industry, helping them, getting our name out, marketing ourselves. That's a big part. That's probably the biggest part. Um, but then also, general community cleanup. We need to raise the bar. We need to improve quality of place, livability. We need to have a realistic redevelopment strategy for James Campbell Boulevard. Start, start making that nice the way we've talked about, beautifying it, etc. There's all these things here. And by the way, all of these things that we need to be doing to attract retail are the things that we need to be doing anyways because you good people have called for this sort of stuff from day one. Either from the day that you came back to the community or you first moved to the community or you started thinking about this stuff for the first time. So what's so beautiful is that everything again that you want to see happen are the same things that these retailers want. And if we do these things to satisfy you, eventually it'll start drawing more people here for all the good things that you already see, and the next thing you know, maybe the retailers follow. Maybe we start with the Bojangles and a Starbucks, which would be an interesting combination, <laughs> right next to each other. One for lunch, one for breakfast, one for dinner. And the next thing you know, there's a Panera maybe, you know, five years down the road. But those things are only going to happen if there's also a better, more beautiful, uh, say, commercial area there for them to go. That's where the city comes in. That's where the city is going to be proposing to council some changes to happen, for example, on James Campbell Boulevard in February, I think, 26th. We've got ideas on how to just basically add some street trees, add some sidewalks, slow down the traffic, add some more streets, uh, raise the bar on what gets built. No more metal buildings, which we haven't had many of those in a long time, but essentially raise the bar, get, get a facelift of sorts to our corridors and that sort of thing. And so all that's coming in February, so we've got ideas. And the funniest part to me is that these are ideas that we've already been doing in the downtown. If you look at the downtown, Barry mentioned Puckets. Does everyone know what Puckets is, that they're coming? Everybody on heads are nodding, okay. Puckets has no business being here, folks. They really don't. I mean, from a business standpoint, when you look at, again, I know, I know, I know. But when you look at our demographics for Columbia, it's hard to see how we are going to support them. But they came here because of that regional draw, right? They also came because of the quality of place that's in the downtown. How many people remember the downtown when it was all overhead power lines and, and yeah, yeah, kind of junky, I, I assume, from what people describe? I wasn't here. We've already done the winning recipe. We've already got it. We've already applied it. We've already seen success. If it's so good that it gets pockets here and keeps square market here and gets other high-end stuff that's in that area and also draws us to one another. I moved here because of the downtown, because I love it. It's already working. We're already doing it. You're already seeing it firsthand in those areas. We're taking care of it. We're making sure that it doesn't get junked up. We're keeping it beautiful with the street trees and the sidewalks, and we're respecting the character that's there. Now, we can do that same exact thing in the rest of the town and make an enormous difference. And if also we get people like Branham and his crew to, to recruit and give them tools like that, nicer places to, to, to sell, they're going to be a lot more successful too. So there's to, to, to wrap up, 
there's some big things coming from the city standpoint that we're going to be proposing in the next month. We're going to be proposing ideas on how to do what we've done in the downtown, how to do those things for James Campbell. So that's coming up in February. Council's going to start looking at that and they're going to have to make a decision. Then we're also going to start working on a new code. Actually, we've already written it. A new code, new rule book to try to make development nicer here, just, just more attractive. So that's already in the works. It's being dis discussed right now by, by Planning Commission. And, it, and, and, and I'm wrapping up, I promise. But the point is, the Murray Alliance has already made a decision. They are in on this and they're working hard on this. And you're not going to see any group work as hard as they do on this retail issue. Is the city going to do the same? That's for them to decide, the council. And this is where you folks come in, I feel. Generation Murray, I like to think of as, as a very, a, a, very a, a group like the city itself with tons of potential to, to make great things happen. You folks, if you want to see these sort of things happen, whether it's for your own benefit, your family, or for getting a Panera, then you have to let your, plan, or your, your council know. And this is where I hope if, if there's any other purpose to this meeting, me being here today, it's to hopefully get you to think about how the most important decisions that happen in this community are the ones that take place right now every other Thursday at your city council and every other, oh, I can't remember when county commission meets, but anyways, the third Monday, that's where it's happening. And they're going to be making a decision on this Sometime this year, I would say probably by the spring, I hope, on whether or not to do these things, these things that we've already put in the hopper. If they see you all there, if they see, or at least, you, you, maybe you don't even have to attend the meetings. If you just came with a, with a phone call, maybe, or an email, if they saw your desire to see these things happen, that's pretty powerful. I'm not going to say it's going to happen, but they're looking for your input. You voted them in. They need to know what you want. There are a lot of people who tell them what they want, and you need to do the same. I can serve up information. Brandon can, and, and his group can do recruiting. Uh, we can identify problems and come up with solutions, but we're not the ones who pull the trigger, the proverbial trigger, on these decisions. And so people come to me all the time with their ideas, and it's it gets a little frustrating because all that energy that they spend coming to me, I, I kind of want to somehow deflect it to the council because I can tell them all day on your behalf, but they hear from me a bunch anyways. I talk too much to them. So anyways, if there's a way to wrap up. It's 1230. We have a stark reality that we're facing. Columbia is declining. It's been declining for a time. But the great news is that we've already figured out a way to turn that around. And we've done that with ways that we've addressed the downtown. And we can do that by building that quality of place, that livability. We can do that again for other parts. And if we do that, we'll see the success that we're going to see with pockets coming in and other things coming into the downtown. So everything's there in front of us. We can attack it. We can deal with it. It starts with uh, communicating with council, seeing what decisions they make, and uh, going forward. So, um, yeah, it's 1230. Sorry to take so much time, but, uh, but that's what's before you. You live here. It's your town. These are your representatives. Talk to them. Tell them. Let them know. Somebody's letting them know. Is it you? Hey, you know, needs to be.